Hi, my name is Judgment. This is part two of my PCM making tutorial. Part one shows you how to get the software you need in order to create your PCM for MSC1 ROM hacks, and it also shows you how to find loop points. So it's kind of the basics. The second part, I'm going to show you how to get a really good volume control and change the the how loud and quiet your PCM tracks are going to be. So your number one tool to get the right volume levels right here in your JSON files, your normalization, 80% of the time you're going to want this to be negative 21, but you can go anywhere from negative 18 to negative 23. Negative 18 is actually going to make it louder because these are negative numbers and negative 23 is going to be quieter. Now I'm going to show you these two tracks that I made while creating my Chrono Trigger set. And it kind of taught me a little something because the volume that you see it in Audacity is not going to be the same volume when you actually create the PCM. So if you look at this, you're going to see that this is obviously going to be a quieter track and that this is going to be a louder track. In fact, I'm going to show you the contrast between the two. This first track here is called Distant Promise. It's when Marley revives Chrono. And the second one is going to be Frog's Theme and it is a loud track in the game. And you can hear the contrast of the two when I flip. So when you're making this, you probably think to yourself, well, I don't want it to be that quiet or that loud. So what I need to do is uh, change the volume level right here. You'll probably think, well, distant promise, I want to have to be louder. So let's turn it down to negative 18 and Chrono Trigger, let's make it quieter. So I'm going to make it negative 23. So this is now quieter and this is louder. However, though, that's actually not what it's going to do when you actually create the PCM tracks. Let's set it to standard 21. And I'll show you what happens when you actually create the track. So let's go ahead and create the two. And what I have inside the music folder is actually these two tracks unedited. And so let's go ahead and take a look. So if you notice, this track's actually slightly louder. So setting these both to 21 actually made this one louder and this one quieter. And the reason why is because it's a little misleading. How it looks in Audacity is actually not how it's going to work. The best way to explain this, and it's not exactly like this, but I feel like it's an easier way to explain it, it's based on what your highest point in the music track is. And to see it more easily, you're going to click Amplify in Audacity, and it'll automatically set whatever your, it'll amplify it to be as loud as it possibly can without clipping out of bounds. So now if I go like this and amplify this one, um, if you could tell, it's actually already out of bounds just slightly. So it's actually going to make it just slightly quieter. So when you actually run it through the program, um, it first uh, finds the highest point and then reduces the volume. So it's actually going to reduce the volume based on it looking like this, not how it was before. And so if you listen to it now, And actually, it has it sound a little louder for this one right here. So as you can tell, um, it actually is going to have this be louder because it's actually looking for the highest point like this right here. That's what it's going to base it off of, and then it makes it quieter. And so if you're unsure how loud it's going to be when you make your PCM track, just highlight everything and do Effect Amplify, and then it'll automatically uh, amplify your highest point to hit the very edge, and that's going to determine how quiet it's going to be. And then from there, that's how what you're going to want to set it to to be quieter. So if you look here, this right here, that spot right there kind of prevents this spot from being any louder because right here hits the edge. So this spot right here is not going to be anywhere near as loud as like a few points like right here and right here. Well, this one right here was kind of more of a consistent melody. So a, there's a lot of high points like right here and right here and right here. So in the end, this one actually ended up being a little bit louder. You just kind of have to play it by ear what sounds about right. And in the end, I actually had this come down to all right all the way to negative 26. So I actually made Distant Promise quieter, while Frog's Theme, I actually turned up a bit. And turning up the volume does going to make like two loud points, like right here and right here. 
going to make two loud points, but only like two loud points is not going to be as big of a deal, and it makes this sound a lot more clear. And so I felt like this was going to be a better setting for it, and it sounded like this when I created the tracks. I would say this is about what you expect when you hear him in game because I do want this track to be quieter and I do want this one to be slightly louder when compared to each other because that's how it's going to be in the game. So that's something to kind of keep in mind when you're making tracks and then there's some tracks that matter what you do it's just not going to work out until you edit it to be so. So when I first made F-Zero uh, this is the Port Town track that I use. I no longer use this track it went with my updated version, but it took me a long time to figure out why I couldn't make this sound right, because it was one of the first PCM sets that I made, and I just wasn't getting it at the time. But the problem is this very clear right here point, because when you run it through the, the program to make the PCM, it's going to look like the highest point is amplified to the max, so it'll look like this. So now my track's going to be this loud, and if I wanted it to be louder, then this right here is going to clip. So either I make this louder, and this is going to clip extremely bad, and it's going to sound awful to the ears, or it's going to have this loud point here, and the rest of the track is going to be really hard to hear. And so there is a way to fix it, though. And if you listen to the track, we're going to get rid of this beginning to start with. So let's go ahead and get rid of that beginning. And then we'll have this fade in right here to make sure there's no clipping. And this is my little trick, is that you can just have it fade in like that. But you don't want to have the first note be quite like that. So I'm going to go back and instead I'm going to start over here. And if you watch, it'll fade in starting right here, slowly getting louder. And it kind of like evens out a bit. Uh, maybe a little quieter than that, so let's go ahead and bring it a little bit back, do effect, fade in. So with some trial and error, I got that high note to look a little more consistent with the rest. Maybe just bring it down just a little bit more, so let's go ahead and do another fade in. Uh, not quite that. Like that. So now if you listen to it, it sounds like the rest of the track. Okay, now one more. Um, I want to show you is this right here, the Spark Mandrel. There, on rare occasions, I come across a track that's like this. This particular music artist did not make it look this way. I actually edited this ahead of time to kind of show an example, but sometimes they'll just get really excited on one note with the drummer or the guitar, and they'll make one note sound louder. And as you learned earlier, whatever your highest note is in the whole song is going to determine your volume level. So it's going to look like this when you run it. And so it's going to be a quiet track with one part that's going to be really loud that'll probably make your Super Nintendo crack. And so we are going to turn this down. And if you listen to it... Okay, so we want to turn that down. So what I would suggest is that you actually make a duplicate like this. Do edit, duplicate, and we're going to have one track fade in and one track... Uh, fade out and but we're gonna have it be overlapping like this watch it looks a little weird at first but it actually makes sense by the time you f you finish so we're gonna have that fade out and then we're gonna get rid of what we don't need and then right here we're going to get rid of what we don't need and then we're gonna have this one fade in like that. Now if you remember though, we're going to have two tracks playing on top of each other. So if we do this, it's actually going to be a little too loud. So we need to go a little bit more on the fade out and the fade in. So we're going to just go like this. So probably that right there is probably what we're looking for. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. I would probably spend more time with this realistically, but now listen to it as we play it. So now we don't have that loud clipping sound anymore. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can always just export the track. So file, export, we'll just do new track spark. So let's see how it looks like now. 
and we'll have it be only one. So it's right here where we did the edit. So right here is the edit that we did. And that looks like a pretty good edit. I would probably have it be a little bit louder and do a little tweaking, but for the sake of this tutorial, it works. So that's just my little trick to get one little spot down, because like I said before, your number one thing that's going to determine your volume is whatever your single highest point is in your music track. Now I want to show you another trick to get a good volume level that requires a little more tweaking. So let's go ahead and have this one right here. Now this track right here is Hothead Bob from Donkey Kong Country 2, and it starts with the acoustic version. This is a nice little acoustic version, not too loud. And then it kind of goes into a guitar, electric guitar. And I didn't like how much louder that felt like when I was listening, so I wanted to tone it down a bit. So a trick you could do is uh, grab the area you want to tone down, do edit, duplicate, and now we're going to have it fade in, uh, just like before. I'm going to have one fade out and one fade in, so it separates them. So it's really obvious I want to do it right here. So let's go ahead and have this right here fade out, effect, fade out, and let's have right here fade in. Now let's just test how it sounds. Now I want this part to be a little more quieter so it kind of matches this part. So what you could do is this right here actually changes the volume level. I would never suggest making it louder. If you want to make it louder, I find amplifying is a bit better, which is right here. Just highlight section and amplify it. So instead, I'm going to just have it go a little bit quieter like this. So do minus three. Now if you listen to it, when it gets to this part, it's going to be a tiny bit quieter. And if I want the guitar part to be even quieter, I could just move it down. See? Make it quieter. Make it louder. So that's one little trick, if you have like one part of the song that's just too loud, you can separate it like this, having a fade in and out, and then you could just change the volume right here and make the part you think is too loud be a little quieter. So I liked doing that when I had this song, so I didn't want the guitar to sound too overwhelming. Um, let me show you one more trick, and this one is a very important trick in my opinion. Because if you look at String Player Gamer's underwater theme for Mario 3, now if you're listening to this with just your earbuds in, just off his YouTube channel, it's going to sound great because it starts off nice and soft and it has a really good build up and a nice finale. Sounds great when you listen to it. But when you play in game though, let, let me show you one of the levels. So it starts right here at 19.25. And a minute later, this is just the original soundtrack. So it only takes a minute, and you're already leaving the level. So a lot of Super Nintendo games can often have levels that are a lot shorter than you think, and if you got like a Power Star in there, or you went through a warp pipe to a bonus area, it can even be shorter than a minute length. So this is just an average length of what you would hear a track in Mario 3 is about a minute. If you look at here, here's a minute. And we don't even get to the louder build build up parts. And as I said, your highest points going to determine uh, the track uh, or the volume of it. And so this right here is going to make it so this right here stays kind of quiet when you actually play it. So if we actually just converted this as is, you're going to have a quiet track actually. And if you try to make it louder, then when you if you ever did get to this part, it's going to crack your Super Nintendo. So there's kind of like a sly little fix that I do in which I duplicate the part that I want to make louder. So and you want to go a little farther past the point that you're actually going to do it. So I'm going to go like right here and it'll kind of show why. So I do edit, going to do duplicate. Now I'm going to start right here. 
and go all the way to right here. I'm going to do an effect, and I'm going to do fade out. This is kind of my little trick to overcome track that have a very quiet beginning and a loud buildup to right here, because I want the beginning to also be equally as loud or at least somewhat close to it, because this is the part you're going to hear most of the time. So if you see, I can just fade it out, and it'll slowly get quieter as it gets to the louder parts. Right here, it's probably going to crack, so let's go ahead and just fade it out even more right here fade out. Now we're going to go ahead and play and see how this sounds. And if you look right here, it's going to show you the volume level of the top one. This is going to be your left earbud, and this one is your right earbud. And this is playing both at the same time, so it's almost like doubling the volume, basically. So when you get to this part here, if you see, it's going to max out right here. If it actually ever goes above zero, it'll, it, there's a chance it's going to crack. Most of the time you want to try to avoid it going above zero right here if possible. But anyways, and so if you see, I probably actually want to make this even slightly louder because right here is definitely going above zero. While right here, even with the double volume, it's not getting quite that high. So I'm going to highlight this whole thing again and do Effect Amplify. Now I don't want to max it out. The default is going to have it max out. So let's only have it go up a little bit more. So I'm just going to say like three, like that. Now let's go ahead and hear how it sounds now. And I love how I'll show you what your highest point is. So you can kind of estimate, as long as you don't go above zero, you're most likely okay. So this is sounding a bit better. Now maybe like, maybe you do want a little bit of a build up so you don't want the beginning to be exactly the same as the end. I can always do something like turn this down too, like that, just turn it down too. Or, or I could just kind of keep it as is. And like maybe I want to have this beginning part right here be a little bit louder. So one thing I can do is I'm going to edit, duplicate, like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I have a fade in, fade out. So let's go ahead and do a fade out. And I'm going to get rid of this right here. Have a fade in. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and amplify this. Uh, we're not going to do 15, so if, if you do it it'll automatically max out, that's going to be too loud. So effect, let's going to go ahead and maybe do like 5, like that. Um, maybe a little bit louder. Let's go ahead and go about um, 3 more, like that. There we go. Now let's go ahead and listen. I heard a little bit of a shift right there, so let's go ahead and make this just slightly quieter. So do effect, fade out, and see how I went way over here? It just kind of like trims it down a bit. So effect, fade out, and now that's going to have it blend into there just slightly better. Now let's hear. So that sounds good to me, but let's see how it looks like when we actually make the track. So we're going to do a new water track, is what I'm going to call it, and save. Just exported it. Let's upload that new track. And now my track's going to look like this when I play it. And I actually think that looks really nice throughout. It might maybe be a little bit too loud right here, if you look. I mean, it doesn't even match right here. So if you look right here, we probably actually want it to start coming down in volume. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit quieter. You can always add on a little length at the end by doing copy and paste like this. So copy and uh, paste. And so that I can do something like this. Go a little bit farther beyond and do effect fade out. Because see, if you go farther beyond than just the edge, it makes it look a little different. So going to the edge makes this right here go super quiet, where if I go past the point, then it'll trim it down, but it's not going to like completely just make it silent right here. So effect uh, fade out like this. So now, when I export it, 
it's actually going to turn down the volume right here. So it actually starts matching right here. So that's just like a few tricks that I do to get the right uh, volume level. All right. Um, a few other things just to share with you in that uh, starter kit that you downloaded in your previous video. Right here in Useful Things, I have Normalization PCM. You can run this to automatically make a track louder or quieter. This is fantastic for if you're using someone else's PCM tracks. You want to change the volume level. So um, let's go ahead and grab one. So this, like, this one right here, we're going to do Copy. And you're going to put it right here into the end. And then you're going to do Run Me. And then all you need to do is type in negative and then whatever volume level you want to set it. So if I want to make it louder, let's do 18 and it's going to make it louder. But we don't want to make that one louder. So let's go ahead and make it quieter. So we're going to run it negative 26 and now it's going to be quieter. So this is just a fast way to put a track in. Click run me, type in your new normalization number and it'll come on the outside. So if you're using someone else's PCM track and it's not matching the rest of your PCM set, then go ahead and just change that one track itself. All right, that pretty much covers everything. And the next one, I'm going to show you some cool techniques in order to uh, make some more complex track with music editing. And um, go ahead and ask me any questions if you have any. Thank you for watching.